What's up, Bear? It was my birthday yesterday. Oh, yeah? So. I didn't know. So, that's fine. I don't care. Okay, well, I should know. Should I not know that? I don't know. How would you know? We don't, like, walk around saying, hey, just a reminder. No, my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know I don't give a shit, so. Right. Like, and if you said happy birthday to me, I'd probably punch you. Yeah. It's like, thanks, but whatever. Yeah. So Happy birthday. Thanks, man. So, my point of bringing that up. Yeah, I know. I thought you were just looking for is, a compliment. No, no, no. It's not really a compliment. No, it's kind of weird. I know when I said that, I said that's a wrong sentence. You know, the, it's it's funny because I don't have my birth, my actual date of birth on any that I'm aware of on any like social media. Right. So I don't get the oh, you don't get five million, yeah. which I love because I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Like we're not really friends. Yeah. Those. I don't. It doesn't do anything for me. You know what? Like you know what God, God bless you if you like that. I don't. So yeah. it's like, I would rather it just be... Don't need attention. That's not yeah, I don't attention. Care. I don't care. Yeah. So, but my point of bringing that up is I was thinking, not to not to start off on a dark note, but I was just like, man, like, I'm going to be 30 years old soon. <laughs> and it's like, man, everybody's going to die one day. Isn't that crazy? Like, you start thinking, you get on a deeper level. So I was thinking, I, the only thing I reflect on when it's my birthday, because my day is just my normal day, but the only thing that it makes me think of is like, Wow. Not like, I'm not thinking like, wow, I'm getting old. I don't think that, but it's just like, man, like time is actually limited and it just keeps going faster. And I was thinking of that last night I was talking with my Christine about it. I was just like, man, like literally everybody's going to die. Like, it's so crazy, man. Yeah. You don't think about it. No. You don't think about a lot of things when you're, when you're young, there's a point in your life where you actually become an adult. And for me turning 30, I guess I remember every decade, right? I'm going to be 55 soon. I remember every decade. I remember going to, approaching 30 and going like, what? I used to think 30, like if you think the kids we train, when they look at you, like being around 30, you're now becoming old. I remember asking Charlie a couple of years ago when uh, he was drafted, talking to Zach Cassian and Dalton Prout and stuff. So they were NHLers, 31 years old. Yeah. So I go, Charlie, do they look, do they look like old to you? He goes, yeah, because he was 15, 14. I go, really? And I said, they're not that old. He goes, no, they like they look like old men. So anyways, when I was going to my 30-year year birthday, it was like, what the heck? Like, it, it blew my mind. I'm thinking that's old. I got to tell you this, though, so look forward to this. 30, for me, 30 to 40, I'd go back there any day. The best. I, I'd rather do that than being 16. That's funny you say that. The absolute best. And here's here's – now, I absolutely – detested my 20s couldn't stand it like it was just like trying to figure out things big time um but my, my 30s were fantastic and i guess probably because you know uh, now you're now you're a little bit more mature you realize where you're you're having fun you're not you're old enough to go out and have fun you know what i mean like in a responsible way well not yeah. really <laughs> but but you, you're making good money like you're a little bit more settled you're looking at maybe if you're starting to mature or if you're are mature I said mature like in a weird way it's mature uh yeah um you you uh you start thinking maybe family maybe maybe but for me that's like every it all came in and everything good uh started for me developing like about 30 31 years old like I love my thirties. So now your next one is going to be when you're approaching 40. Cause when I started getting 36, 37, I'm like, man, I'm going to be 40 years old, dude. And I like, I would look at 46 year olds and 45 year olds and go, Oh, like, this is old. Look at how you wear your pants. Like you have to wear a sweater. You have to wear socks with those. Like yeah, <laughs> you, have to, you have to act like that. Comb your hair like that. Like what the heck? It's just like a thing. And then, 50 is 50 yeah <laughs> but to your point you do start looking at things differently because 30 years is 30 years right like you're you're you're, uh, you're you're getting there and it's young oh yeah it's not i don't feel like no, I'm you're old, young but but and the nice thing too like maybe a little low-key benefit is no one ever guessed i'm older than 24 so i have that which is nice but I was thinking it's funny you said that 30 to 40 is your best decade because literally just last night and actually yesterday, one of the guys from the rank was talking to me about it and said the same thing as you did. But uh, I was talking to my Christine about it. And I was like, I think like 30 to 40 is like probably the high, highlight decade, if not the highlight decade, a highlight decade because of all the things you said. So we just like hap happened to be talking about it. And I kind of was like thinking in that yeah. ballpark anyways. Yeah. Um, well, you got to think. You, you, you take care of yourself. You eat healthy. You got goals dreams you're you're not uh, old enough to be depressed that you didn't hit them 
you're young enough to say I can I can do these things. Um, you you can um, start your family or not, but you can make intelligent decisions based on where you are. Um, and it's it's awesome. Like it's great. You got time. You got energy. Right. You got testosterone. Yeah. I feel like the the way that I put it is like I don't want. I don't want, I'm excited about the future, so I don't want to like stop where I am or anything. Um, but I feel like I'm maximum free right now. Like I have, oh, I feel like sure. I have the maximum amount of freedom. Like I live, I live on my own. I pay for all my own stuff. I have, my job's great. I don't have kids that, I don't want to say that negative because I'm not negative about having kids, but like it, obviously that comes with a lot of, I don't want to use the word restriction but maybe just responsibility is way more ramped up now because it's like it's about your kids it's not just about you like i can be maximum free and maximum selfish basically right now which is why it's like a it feels like a good time and that next 10 would be the best but who knows what by the time i'm 80 maybe life expectancy will be 130 and then yeah well, 80, 80 will still be young that's it <laughs> right yeah, that's which it. is weird that's but, it like there's, there's there's things that could keep you a little bit younger but yeah like like so your thoughts on um, hitting 30 so I'm thinking like look at this look at this face look at how I act like not that other people would notice I'm put I'm looking at 60 yeah, yeah, yeah. come on know, man okay okay question though yeah, yeah, so yeah. if in your head okay, in my head I'm I think I'm stuck in my head at like 22 I don't feel much different mentally than I did when I was 22 I just feel like I know more things but my mental state, I feel like, is the same. Do you have a age that you're pinned to mentally? Twelve. Or, yeah. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Actually, though, like what? Yeah. Had, like serious number. Like what? Where it was like you don't feel like you've aged pat mentally past a certain number. Like what would the number be for you? Mentally. Yeah, men just mentally. Like wh- okay, you feel just, like you're stuck just, in time at an mentally. age. Yeah, young, young. Like not because I'm. I th- I think like 22 for me. You think younger than that for you? Maybe it's maybe I'm lying to myself, but mentally, look who I hang out with. I get it. I'm, you look, could, it could look, be twelve. No, that's what I'm saying. Well, I want to give myself more than twelve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I, and mentally not twelve. <laughs> like this is no, no. I'm being serious. So serious mentally serious. not twelve. Ah. Uh, Probably okay. So I'm I'm thinking like having conversations with the with the kids and stuff like that. It's like probably twenty is still a little young, but I would say probably thirty. Thirty would be yeah. I I would say thirty for sure. You know, I think about Prouder. You know, some of those friends that you know, it's yeah. Well, it's I get them. They get me still. I think maybe they just get me because they they're nice to me and respect yeah. me. <laughs> but so so speaking of age too, how it flies. So we were up in Sudbury last week to watch the boys play. And I called my Mr. Rose because um, I wanted to see if he wanted to grab a coffee, you know, just catch up with him because I'm in town. And uh, I called him and I forget. Remember, he stopped in here a couple of years ago and he looked like he's 65. And I, I can't picture him any older than what I saw him. So I called him and he was so happy to hear from me, surprised him, you know. And he said, so, Mr. Rose, if you want, I'm going to be in town on Saturday. If you want to grab a coffee or anything like that, I'd love to catch up with you. And he goes, oh, Andy, I'd love to. I got a doctor's appointment. And and he's not getting out of that, right? And then I remembered he's 85. 85. 85-ish, maybe more, maybe less, but like 85. So I'm like, so if I ran it, like, yeah, he's 85, you know? Yeah, I know. It flies. I can't picture him past that. This is my favorite coach ever. And I think that that's the only thing that I, it makes, gives me like a time to reflect on that kind of line of thinking when it's my birth that's the only thing i that really matters but you know what's weird is i remember being a little kid like little little like eight years old and thinking about that which is weird i always had like a i think that i always had a i don't know like i don't know what the word would be like a depth where like i just thought about stuff like that like i remember thinking of like eight years old i remember being in my bedroom and i'd get sad like i remember running out of my room because i'd be like crying so i'd be thinking about like my oh my parents are gonna get older like i'm gonna get older and it would like make me sad so I remember always having that, like every year I would think about, go through that cycle of like thinking about the time thing and the age thing. It's such a weird thing, man. Yeah, so it is. Weird. Well, so just a last thing on that, maybe. My wife and I talked about this. And there's only one or two reasons why um, that I have concerns about my death, like when I do pass away. 
that's my my boy and my my family, right? It's so, like I just want them to be able to function. Like I know they will, but I just like being the sounding board and seeing success and helping just being the thing. But anyways, Mr. Rose again, uh, the encouraging part is, is uh, this is why I would always say to people, even if you don't like it, you know, sorry to bug you, but Mr. Rose was very, very active. He ran, lifted weights, played sports, kept his mind sharp, always took a course. And, you know, just talking to him on the phone, if you didn't know how old he was, you'd think he's the same age as me. His voice has a vibrant voice, sharp energy. And, like, if there's ever a reason to um, think that, like, 85 years old, you would, would, I think a lot of people think of 85, it's like, you know, can I help you up the stairs type of thing and, you know, be real nice. Like, Mr. Rose would be, you walk in here, I'd treat him the same way as I treat you. Like, hey, uh, Harold, do you want to go grab me that thing over there? Like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's got energy coming out the wazoo. So um, fitness and always help, ate, ate healthy, very important. So that's a really good reminder in front of my face. Every time, anytime you want to get lazy, life can be good, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a good uh it's a good thing to aspire to be, man, for sure. Because you have time, and it's never too late either. That's the thing. It's like it's never too late to start to try to get on that track. Because you want to be like ninety years old and feeling good and able to do stuff that you enjoy, right? There'd be nothing, nothing worse in my head than, or in my mind, that you're, you know, whatever, so limited in your last little bit that you can't do things you you like to do. So you ever hear me say a prison. negative thing about Mister Rose? Not one. Ever. The best man. I know. Every time he comes up, yeah. you, it's a, and that's what it's great, man. That's yeah. what you want. That's what I want in a coach. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, my name is David. For the last roughly year or so, I've been a member of the PowerTech podcast and I've trusted Eric and Andy to help me as a hockey dad, raising my kids and trying to figure out the answers. I don't have all the answers and it's a great source of information and it's a, an area where I feel comfortable leaning on to help me make better decisions. With that said, one thing I do know about is supplements. I find it's hard to navigate the whole supplement world and make sure that you're using products that work, that are effective, and again, are science research based. Blue Star products, incredible brand. The products are based on research, science, the products work, trademark patent ingredients, and you can find all of the research just by scanning QR codes that are right on the back of the product. Thank you to Eric and Andy for their podcast. I think it's amazing and definitely give Blue Star products a try. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little, uh, a little tease to the people that do the, do the memberships because people are still signed up, which is cool. Um, we're looking at doing some in-person events. So I think it's at the point where I, f I feel like, um, we're actually going to be pursuing it. We've been throwing around the idea for a little bit and I think now it's starting to Perfect. seem like we're doing, we're actually doing it. So I'm not saying hundred percent we're going to do it, but, um, it looks like we're, we have we're trying to lined up. Yeah, we have one lined up. So, um, and the membership people are the ones that make it happen. So if you guys uh, want to support us and help us to get out and do that, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. And we're probably going to do some kind of incentive for people that are members um, to get tickets to those events um, sooner than everybody else. So uh, if there's enough of you guys, you might just sell it out and it might just be the people that are members. So if that's uh, an extra incentive for you to do that, then that would be, that would be awesome. Um, and it wouldn't be necessarily just us speaking. We might get like a whole lineup of people. Could be just us. Could be a lineup of people. It depends how the planning goes. But uh, I thought that'd be something for you guys to look forward to um, for us to kind of reach out. And this is why we keep talking about the membership thing, because this is what allows us to do it. So uh, if you're interested in that, then you can go on uh, the website or in the description of the video and you can see the options there, which is, uh, which is cool. So check that out. You guys can also uh, leave a review share the clips like you are across Instagram or whatever social media. And we will, um, or we greatly appreciate you guys doing that as well. Cause that is super helpful. So, um, last after that would be the blue star, uh, sponsorship that we have. We actually have another sponsorship that's coming up soon, but uh, you can check out the links for the blue star stuff too. They have some great stuff that we use. You can see over my shoulder here. So, uh, so check that out and you get some great discounts on that as well. So, uh, today I wanted to talk about um, skating mechanics. I think I'm going to title it like how to fix skating mechanics, but this isn't really going to be exactly how to fix it because there's a lot of like moving parts to this. So, um, I'm going to try to get as specific as I can because that is actually going to give people like practical things that they can look at. Um, but for me, the, the thing that's made me kind of think of this topic again is I've been doing a lot of teaching on the treadmill again, and it's like a very good tool for isolating poor mechanics at any age, any level, whatever, you can really like break down um, exactly where people are, are missing. 
So I've been looking at that a lot and there's just like some consistent things that I see at certain age groups that um, I'm not going to say they're necessarily easy to address, but things that maybe you aren't aware of if you're trying to improve skating because everybody, um, there's like the slogan things people say like bend your knees and most people know about like long strides now, I guess, but there's certain things that people just throw out there and say um, as ways to fix it, but I find it, it doesn't really translate and people, because kids, especially kids, they don't know what it means when you're saying these things. So actually being able to explain some of this stuff would, might be helpful or help you if, if there's just like something weird, you're looking at your kid and there's like, there's just something off about the skating, you can't put your finger on it. Maybe like these are some things you can look at. Um, but I, I want to be careful about saying fixing the skating mechanics because there's like a ton of stuff that goes into fixing and then like what does fixing even mean and what is a good skater and all those kinds of question so before we kind of get into like those fundamental things um i, I want you to kind of revisit your your thought process because i i agree with you when you talk about this topic is just like you don't know how much uh of kids skating mechanics you can actually fix like how much can you actually change a skater and kind of where do you draw the line between you can fix the mechanics versus um they can like fix the mechanics to be like an ideal skater versus you could just like help them get better with what they already have and maybe just like the skating mechanics um, topic in general, because it's a very emphasized thing in like hockey land. So just what are your like op kind of opening thoughts just on that in general? Well, I'll go like just on my experience of training hockey players. And there is one point where I was probably um, everything was in packaged in the same way, right? You have to get low, get your ass down, bend, bend, bend your, not your knees, but have that hip hinge, get down low, extend the stride, get the chest up. Our arm should swing a certain way, more or less, um, for for your stride length, and then your quick feet comes off the balls of your feet and all that stuff. And then when when I and and that's mostly true, but then that's where you have to, as a coach, as a trainer, as even if you're a player, you have to kind of think outside the box sometimes because not everybody's the same. So, for example, there was um, kids that I trained like that were just beautiful skaters you know, okay that's the way you do it well there wasn't a whole lot to fix why do they get that way i don't know are they just good athletes or they just get on the skates some bodies just move really nice when they're on the ice right but then so and then you know your recovery stride where should your feet come in then you're watching a guy skate and people go wow a taylor hall for example who i have been on the ice with uh, Ryan Moore was another kid that I looked at. They had that really wide wheel, wheelbase. So if you look at in Guelph, uh, Carabella and, and uh, Nemo have that, right? They're low to the ice and it seems like a really, really wide wheelbase. Well, that kind of goes against the recovery stride coming back in the middle, or at least appears like that. And they're, they're, they're not, I'm not going to say Carabella's not tall, but he's not really tall. He's like six feet or a little bit under. And, and so is um, uh, Nemo. So is that, a function of like how they get their wide wheelbase. So was uh, Taylor's like six one six, and so was uh, Morsey that I was talking about. They had that wide wheelbase. So it was like, oh man, that wide wheelbase. So do you teach that? So oh, I'm thinking Morsey, for example, he was very bow, uh, bow legged. So you're saying like the when you say the wide, it's like the distance between their feet yeah. was wide. Yeah, wider. Right? So it the looked like they set. had that real yeah. stability, right? So it's like, is that is that something that you teach, or is that something that you? Uh, just have by default. And I think that's a default thing, right? So, and then, okay, so you look at that. So that changes, that has to change the theory of everyone has to skate, look the same way when they skate, more or less, right? The perfect skater shouldn't just look like that because there's differences. So then you look at someone like Jack Eichel. Eric Lindros was, in my opinion, was another one that they looked like they were almost straight up and there was almost no knee, knee bend. So where are they generating their power from? Or are they bending and you just don't notice it? They, see, they seem taller when they're on the ice. Then you look at another kid that has a that goes against everything that you would ever teach. Potsy, so Matt Potra has a, a pretty evident forward lean. So it would 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 immediately indicate you're going to be off balance a little bit. You're not maximizing your hip hinge. You're not have maximizing maximizing your stride. You see a lot of those guys, but they get around the ice fine. So my general statement on skating is to put a one thing fits everybody. I don't think that's I don't think that's a thing. So so I think there's still general principles, right? If you finish your stride on your heel, well, you, you're missing your whole foot, yeah. <laughs> right? So you have to finish on your toe. You have to you get the knee drive. You have to, 
you know, get to the to center as much as you can so you can have a long stride. I think your balance is important. So, you know, having your upper body um, not over your toes too much, uh, your arm swing, all those different things are important. But I think everyone's going to be a little bit different. So that's one thing, right? Are you agile or are you not? I, I don't know if that's – you can do some stuff on the ice for that, yes. Um I think I lost a little bit of my train of thought there. Oh, let me jump in for okay, a second. Sure. If you get it, just interrupt me. Because um, I kind of agree for me, because now that I've been doing, I think it's been like 12 years now I've been teaching skating. And it's like, I think the same thing. There's general principles that apply, but then there's a there's play between um, like from kid to kid. So it's like you try to teach them general things, but certain kids, like I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, is like depending on their body proportions, like some things might work for them better than others. You know, so I, well, maybe I'll just do it right now. Like if you have, if you have a really long legs, for example, you naturally are going to be able to extend your leg out more because your leg is longer. So it might be an easier thing for you to get a long stride. Whereas a kid with a shorter leg can't do it, man. You should, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, even just leg strength. And this is where you can start to look at the off ice portion of it as well. But like, if you have really strong legs, then the force you're generating is just, is just better. So like there's, a, I'm looking at two kids that I'm thinking of two kids right now, they're 2012s. And I actually don't know who's the faster skater, but the one kid just has like huge ass, like really meaty thighs, like that that hockey player leg, the lower half development. And he's a 2012 kid. And his buddy, who's also a 2012 kid, looks like this pen, right? And he can skate. And he can skate. Yeah. So I'm looking at both of them and I'm like, okay, probably more long-term, like this kid that has the genetics of the beefy legs, will probably be able to generate more power on average as he gets older. He just has like a genetic advantage in that department. But then then maybe not though. Maybe it slows him down because his legs are super heavy and he doesn't know how to, like these are things, right? Um, flexibility in your hips. That's a big one to me because people don't think about the back half of the stride, that recovery portion that you're talking about, right? The recovery portion is your ability to drive your knee up in front of you. If you can't drive your knee up because your hips aren't flexible, then you're going to be limited there, Right. Um, it's the second force on the stride. It's the push, that's right. the pull, push, pull, right. Um, where your balance is your center of gravity. So you're talking about kids that have that forward lean, right? If kids have a little bit more of a forward lean, maybe in theory, it's like, yeah, that, that your center of gravity is going to be over your toes. That's no good, but it's like, okay, but maybe based on how your hips are, how your legs are, that forward lean actually helps you to get, because you can't sit back in the saddle as well or whatever. Right. Um, the size of your upper body length of your arms um and then overall flexibility just with legs and everything. those those types of things so this the way your body is designed will impact what you're able to do and how, the positions you'll be able to sit in like i'm thinking of uh big jacks that we have here like watching this guy try to do a back squat it's like it looks like it's painful for him because his legs are so freaking long man you know so his his uh his femurs actually aren't as long relative to the lower half of his leg. So it's like when he goes to sit into a squat, it's like hard for him to get into that nice fold position where he hinges his hips back, right? And so for him, it just looks a little bit different. You know, for him doing a deadlift, it's like better for him. He gets the same range of motion if it's elevated a little bit as someone who's shorter than him, you know? So there's all these body proportion things that play into the mechanics. So it's not like, again, to your point, just emphasizing it's not one size fits all. There's like general principles that will apply, but um, there has to be some leeway, at least in my opinion, for kids to work yeah. with their own body. So question, because like, I was just thinking about something here. Uh, I was just, you were just talking about the leg l length, and I was talking about straight up guys and knees bent guys. Just a thought. And I've thought about this several times, but just a thought out loud right now. is like if a guy goes to a figure skater to learn how to skate, when you watch a figure skater skate, do you see a really deep knee bend and a low ass? There you go. Do you? No. No. They're pretty upright. So that's like opposite of what a lot of people talk about. Well, and this and this is what's funny is because th this is where it can get into like you have to be very specific about what why you're doing what you're doing. So if you're if your issue because in hockey you in order to get super long strides, which is important for generating the maximum force, because we're trying to race. Like in figure skating, that's not necessarily what they're doing. Yeah, right? I don't know. So it's well, they don't. They're not racing. No, they're not racing. They're getting they're around right. the ice. Yeah, like doing their routine, whatever. So they need to be good on their edges and whatever, but they're not necessarily in the business of generating maximum forward power, right? So if I'm a, I'm a hockey player and my main issue is that I can't fully extend my strides because I don't get low enough, 
that if that's one reason, then will going to the figure skater help that? Right? So it's like you have to be able to tell which thing is the issue. Like this is this is why I wanted to talk about this stuff because it's so you need to be specific about what the problem is. And to a degree, like especially when you're young, you just need to get better at everything. Like that's the other thing that that's important to understand, right? So <clears throat> Um, do you have anything else on that? any other thoughts on that the the figure skating thing? Because you just asked. No, I questions. just I was just thinking about that out loud. It was just like that's like my point to saying that is like if someone's saying, "Well, go to a figure skater," and I'm not saying don't. I'm saying probably go. Yeah, try, try it. Just be aware, like when people like think outside the box as well as like, okay, well that does that type of skating translate into being a hockey skater, right? That's that's all I'm saying. We're doing doing skating you know, look at some of the drills you're doing. Okay. Does that actually translate into being a better skater? Is it always skating that turn translates into a better skater? Because you can do something like I, this is, this was a interesting one because I had to do this with a couple guys. Well, several guys is getting the turnover speed, like the quick, the quick, uh, quick starts, let's say uh, coming out of turns or coming out of stops, those quick starts. It's like, it's a different type of skating. And do you just, oh, this is a question. I, I know my answer, but or do you say, okay, I got to work on my quick feet. So do you jump on the ice and work on your first three, four strides? Does that fix it? I would say maybe, but I would also say probably not. Because is it, if it's just a matter of doing something over and over and over, that doesn't necessarily, doesn't, doesn't mean that you're fixing it. I mean, the, the definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and getting, never getting a different result, right? Or getting the same results. So just a question. It's just a question. So, like I've got my answers, but I, I'm just throwing how to, like when you're looking at things, how to think about it. That's all. Yeah, like, absolutely. You know, like not just say, oh, do this. Because that's what I see a lot of people do is like, like for example, we when, when, when I bought the skating treadmill, um, I was kind of against it at first. Like I'm like, I'm not buying that stupid thing. It's not ice. Well, then you can't rollerblade because that's not ice either. Then you can't like you know what I mean. So I bought it and I'm like, what is it good? What is it good for? And for me, it was. Okay, so I'll give you my reason why I bought it. It wasn't for conditioning. It wasn't for anything uh, other than the fact that for the first time in my life as a teacher, it made sense that someone could watch themselves skate live, and I could or you can, or whoever's teaching, if we know what you're doing, you can pick apart the mechanics of skating live. So like for me, a lot of the problems when you do video is video is always most of the time done after the fact. So you do a task, come back, watch the video, and then, okay, you got this, this, and this, let's change that. And then you do it again. It's like, well, you can do it live with, with, uh, on the, with the mirror and all that stuff. So, if a kid does have a forward lean, you can just sit there and say, okay, so like we can fix this right now and they can see it live. They can see where they're, if they're toe flicking, if they're bringing it back to the middle, where they're, if they're off balance, if they're not hip hinges. So all those things are, are, are good. So you can li do it live. That's the point. So I, I don't sit here and say, yeah, you, everyone should get on that skating treadmill because that's the answer. No, not, it's not. If you're just going out there skating and doing the same thing over and over without making a fix. So for me, that was like, the fix or a, a, a good solution to fixing sta skating mechanics, some skating mechanics, not all. Yeah. Well, and that's, I, I say the same kind of thing when, with, when I'm talking about nutrition and teaching nutrition is like, think of, I say, think of food as tools. Like anything you consume is, can be used as a tool depending on what the outcome is you're looking for. And that's the same with trying to fix anything or do anything. It's like, there's everything is a tool. It's not necessarily positive or negative or good or bad or one thing or another. It's like, is this a, well? Is this appropriate and will it be effective for the thing I'm trying to fix? And so, if for certain types of skating issues, like that's where a treadmill could be really good. For other things, maybe you need to be doing it on the ice. Maybe whatever, you know. So, um, I want to go through a couple specific things about skating mechanics. I basically wrote down like every component I could think of, and then I'm gonna go through them. And then I want you to like stop me if you have, um either something that you've recognized as being a common issue or just if you 
have something to say about it in general, a fix, or maybe there's not a right way to do it when people think there is, or whatever comment, just like interject it while I say it. Um, or I'll, I'll interrupt myself and talk about it too if I feel like it. Uh, so, okay, so the first one, these are just kind of like the fundamentals of skating mechanics in no particular order. I just wrote down all the things that I kind of thought. So the first thing is um, having a balanced posture. So that's number one. So if you're off balance, and that can mean a bunch of different things, but if you're off balance, then nothing's going to happen, right? Because you feel like you're off balance. Um, so in every sport, there's a certain position that is optimal. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you get outside of that, you become weaker, less effective. Boxing, there's a stance. Yeah. There's where your so elbows need to be. What? Yeah. So fun. I was just about to say, yeah. bring up yeah. uh, boxing and right? the jiu-jitsu. I was just about yeah. to bring those up. So like if you start throwing you know, off balance with your footwork off and your arms are out wide, you're going to get hammered and you're just not going to be as effective. Whereas if your elbows are like, look at me, you can just scrap it, right? Protect yourself, but like throwing right and coming from the hips and just making that quick, like the most efficient punch makes a big difference. So it's yeah, the same so with skating. I was going to give the analogy with uh, jujitsu. There's this guy at the gym that I, uh, I roll with. I can't, I, hate, I don't want to say hate, but it's, he's the worst guy to roll with. Because he's, I think he's a, he just got his brown belt. His name is Mike. He's not going to listen. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and this guy is the master, at least to me, of all the people that I, I roll with. He can make me off balance so easy. Like he just rides my movement to get me off balance. And then it's so easy to just topple me over, you know? And so I, I the whole time I'm fighting with him, I just feel awkward. I just feel like I'm not in a good spot, even if I am in a good spot, just because he pulls my arm across my body a little bit, or like I start to move this way and he bumps me further this way, like these kinds of things where it's like, it's just really easy for him to flip me over and I'm a heavy guy. So it's like he, it, it makes me feel like unathletic or like I'm just in a bad spot. And it's the exact same thing with, with skating. Like if your limbs are in weird positions or your body's not in the right position to keep you balanced, then you're going to not, you're not going to be optimal. You're going to feel weird and awkward, right? So that was, that was my first one. Second one, this kind of, I feel like most people know this is just the stride length. Obviously, a longer stride is better for generating power simply because you're pushing off the ground for a longer period of time. And then you have more opportunity to do that pull motion of bringing your leg back and driving your knee forward, right? So you're covering further distance. So the more distance you cover with the stride, then the more power you're going to be able to generate. And then your glide is doing some work. That's right. Even though you're not working, it's working. Yeah, I think I have the glide in here too at some point. Um, so that's that's the second one. Uh, third one is the arm position. So I want to talk about this one too because well, I remember when I started when I started teaching about um, like the arm swing because this is a big a common thing like you especially with younger kids like they want to throw the arms across their body whatever. And I think generally speaking, if you're gonna throw your arms across your body, that's not good because your shoulders are st start to rotate and now you're not in the direction that you're trying to go. But it also doesn't have to be like straight arm pump and I remember that was I think a mistake I was making as a teacher when I was younger is like I would say like make sure you keep your arms on the their own side kind of thing you're thinking more along the lines of a runner in yeah. that sense a yeah. sprinter right right that would be very inefficient to rotate your body but in hockey it's a little bit different because you have that yeah <laughs> gonna sound like a doctor external rotation of your arse right of your butox so like your hips rotate a bit so it's like your whole body does twist a little bit. It's not going to be perfectly straight. So a little bit of a rotation or a little bit of your arm swing coming across your body. Not across like this, but there is like a, I don't know what angle that is, but well, I think maybe it comes to the other side of the face. Of your face. I think it would be the same as I was saying with, with the jiu-jitsu examples. Like if your arm starts to come across your body to the point where your shoulder starts to rotate, that's where you're start to, going to start to get some issues with the, in the stride. Um I don't really know what I mean by this, so maybe you can ah, give me give me an idea. Good thing you put it down. I, I know I wrote down like like edge control. Maybe that's like agility, maybe, but I don't I don't know what I mean by that. But like, just like feeling like being able to feel your blades. We talked about this in the power skating episode too. Like just being that people say that like get comfortable on your edges and like be able to you know you go like heel to toes and those kinds of things. Or I know the example I'm thinking of is on the ice when you do those wide stick handles and you're like so when you're on the one side you're on like toe other sides on the heel vice versa kind of thing so you're yeah the the best way like when you when you when you threw it out there like that like because i i'm, I'm it's, for me the the term edges bothers me because like people make it sound like oh he's good on his edges or look at his edge work it's like he's 
to me, it's just skating. Skating is on your edges. Yeah. yeah. But having said that, there are like, and, and, and I have a hard time putting a sentence around it. All, the only way I, I know how to do it is that when I, when I teach it on the ice is that um, any skill that you have is it's okay to be able to do a skill. It might look good. The next question is if you had to get out of that position because it didn't work. So, right. So if you if you if you were doing a uh, let's say you pulled the puck in, I just use that for example, right? So you pull the puck into your feet, the weight's not transferred properly. If someone gets in your lane now, can you shoot? Can you make a play? Can you get out of that position? That's what I that's what I talk about when I'm talking about being being comfortable on your skates. So the way that I like I can show it. And explain it, but like, there's too many examples right now to come up with it. So, if my my thing is is that if it feels right, and you know what right feels like, then it's probably right. If it feels off or un, not uncomfortable, because that's not the necessary the right term, but it might be, is that if it feels like it's not fluid, if it feels like you can't get out of that naturally then definitely is there's something wrong. So that's what I was saying. Like if you, so it, when people say skating, like you finish off at your toe when you're skating, yes and no. Yes. If you're going a straight line forward and your nose is going to the net or whatever, and you're going to straight line. If you want to have any type of agility, like you want to make a lateral move or whatever, you're not so much on your, toe. sometimes you are, but if you want to make a quick movement, then you're pushing your, you're loading up on your heels more with your ass down and pushing up. So like that just takes some practice. That takes some skill work. That takes being aware of like, okay, this feels right. And then for some people, it's just natural. Yeah. I, I like, I like the framing of uh, being able to escape or do something else. So like make a move. Can you make another one where it feels, you get out of that? yeah, where it feels you have natural. an escape move. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the best way of framing the edge stuff too, because that's because now you're taking the edge edge work thing and now you're putting it into like actual hockey. I think that's the difference because when you when you talk about edge work, it does it's not really specific of like like what is this for? Because then you think of like edge work around the cones, the ten and twos, like all this stuff that we talk about, which is fine. Crossovers, but, yeah, turns. yeah, but it's not it's not hockey. Whereas if you think of it like if you make a move in a game, can you make another one? Can you escape? Now we're talking about applying that comfortability on your skates to the actual game. So that would be another one. Um, speaking of that would be crossovers. So the, the one thing you, you talk about a lot with crossovers, I've noticed when you teach it is uh, there's the crossover, but there's the cross under and how like the crossover takes two, it's both two feet. They both have a job in, in doing the, the movement. So talk a little bit about that, that, that piece of it, the over part. But then what do you mean when you're talking about like the cross under? Um, yeah, after it's, you finish? It's, it's not rocket science. Right. No, no, yeah, I know, I know, it's, I know it's fine. Not rocket science, but I, I just say the guys that aren't, aren't great skaters are possibly maybe just younger. That they that everyone talks about a push, right? So it's that outside finishing to the toe, which people get, so they push hard. But what I find the biggest deficiency when they're when kids are skating or players are skating, it's the cross under where they don't generate quite as much power. So what you'll see is like in my opinion is that if you listen to someone do a crossover it should sound the same so if it's like the outside is shh, the inside should be shh, not <laughs> sound effect it's a sound effect i not shh, shh. and that's inside foot is like they're just not generating enough they're not finishing at the toe as well or they're not extending quite as well so you see and then you'll see like a little bit of a hop sometimes and sometimes very subtle so in order, like fixing that is just do, you can do drills. There's a, a drill you can do, right? Where you're doing like big crossovers, but you're making sure that you're maximizing both strides, which so should sound basically the same. And you should, it should, right? It should take the same time. And then even if you're doing the quicker ones, it should be the same thing, generating power from both sides. So it's like, I think the cross under is probably the outside edge of a crossover, or cross under is probably the most under, Utilized is that the word underdeveloped. or underdeveloped, underdeveloped in, a, yeah. in a crossover? Yeah, good. That's exactly what I wanted you to say. So, there you go. Um, if you look at and so if you look at someone stopping in hockey, what's the hardest edge to stop on if you're just using one leg, right? 
So if you like very easy for some, cause kids actually learn how to snow plow. You, I mean, that's a tactic, right? Um, so if you go, if you were to do an inside foot stop, that's the hardest one for kids to get because balance is off and it's like, you know, they if they get it, they might chatter. They feel like they're gonna fall. Yeah, w- one place that you can see it too. I remember I, I'm you're talking about that, and I was thinking of uh, I remember a highlight of uh, Austin Matthews scoring where he did like a regroup in the neutral zone, and he just picks up so much steam. But one place you can see it um, is I would say like for pow- like watch guys on power play breakouts, where the forwards come back, they're deep in their zone, and they go around the circle. And they're doing that crossover, cross under, and it looks like they're not going hard. But by the time they hit the blue line, it's like they have so much steam because both of that crossover, cross, like the pace of the crossover, cross under is the same. So then you get, that's where you get McDavid looked like he wasn't even skating hard, but he gets the puck at the red line and he's just blowing by everybody. And it looked like he wasn't trying. It's like he's generating so much power on those crossovers turning around that it's well, hard Well, there's to- one. Would you consider him... I, I can't even remember, like, on the top of my head, but does he look like he's really low or does he look like he's straight around? He look, He reminds me more of, like, a Taylor Hall. Like, he looks more he? Like a, little a, wider? a little bit wider. Yeah. But um, he he almost looks like, like, he does that weird thing where it's, like, when he's doing his crossovers, he looks like he's almost standing up. Like, he does yeah. those quick, yes, yes, quick yes, crossovers. Yes, yes. He yeah. does those. Um, but I think when he's doing, like, the straight line skating, he reminds me more like that Taylor Hall look, that little bit wider base. Um, but I'd have to go and look now that I'm. Yeah, no, that. I'm thinking I, about. I, that is what he's I got think. to get low. Well, yeah, that, that's what I think. I think he's got that little bit wider. Yeah, I think um, you're right. Set, but um, a powerful push. We can kind of breeze off that. It's just like actually trying to be intentional about the stride. Um, being stable in your core. This is a that's a big one. Actually, these two kind of go together to, with me. The core stability and then um, your upper body coordination. So like, uh, the core stability part. It's kind of everything starts from that, right? I remember we talked to Chad from Edmonton about that. He was talking about how to fix skating mechanics, and he didn't like the question either because it's so... Well, he, that's right. Yeah, yeah he, that's right. He, he doesn't like... Because actually, the, we specifically asked, like, how do I get faster? And he doesn't like that question. And then we got into the skating mechanics, and he was talking about one of his three pillars of um, becoming a better skater is having some core strength, right? Core stability. Because everything's we're starting from that center of gravity position where you're low, right? So if you can't brace, if you don't have strength through your trunk, then it's going to be hard to get yourself in a good position. Yeah. And so we had Charlie with a track coach this summer. Interesting because um, they're explaining, it was near the end of the summer too, doing drills where, you know, you're doing the knee drive, but doing the knee drive where you're totally engaging the core and not letting your you know, other muscles take over. And, and what a challenge. So that's a very under, like who thinks so you skate with your belly? Really? Well, you do. Well, and then the other, that's, that's your power. Yeah. Well, Anyways, go. The other, the other thing too, is like people don't, people don't really know what the core, core is. Like people think abs is core and it's like front and back. The way I say it is like the posterior side, front side, chest down, knees up, like all part, there's parts in there of everything that could be considered core. So it's not like just your abs contracting that's core strength um but but the big thing for that is if if you don't if you can't stabilize your core then it's going to be really hard to maintain a good hip hinge when you're trying to skate it's like it, all of that right if you ever done a back squat or you ever do a deadlift it's like you have to have that brace the whole time or your posture just breaks down right so it has to be strong and it's the same with with uh with the skating and then next to that was the upper body coordination this is one that i find kids struggle with a lot when you tell them how to fix it so it's the if they're thinking too much and they can't figure out the co- the coordination piece, but the way that I I you could talk about it in terms of like having a rhythm, like where things kind of flow the same way. I notice it a lot when we do a, like a single leg box jump or a step up, explosive step up. A lot of kids they don't they don't have the mapping of the arm swing with the leg, the opposite arm, opposite leg drive at the same time. Like they don't have that, and you can notice if you get into that comfortable groove. Your, your body has like a natural flow to it or like your arm and your opposite arm and opposite leg kind of want to do the same movement pattern where if you're going forward, they're going forward. If it's going back, it's going back at the same time on opposites. So that's kind of something else that, that, uh, that you can look for. Um, frequency of the stride that kind of go, goes with the, the stride length. If you're taking like shorter choppier strides, obviously that's, um, yeah, but the frequency of it, a lot of people think it's again it's important to understand there's the push but it's the pull so having a good strong uh hip flexors Mm -hmm. right to drive that and flexible yeah Yeah. to drive drive the knee forward is a really important part that is 
probably another very underdeveloped or one that doesn't get as much attention. Yeah, and I, I'm sure really good pro uh, skaters understand that, but I mean, in general. The other element of it too, I think, is is uh, increasing the frequency while maintaining the long stride. That's a hard thing that people struggle with when they're developing um, as skaters. Like, I'll, cause I'll I'll tell kids like, "Hey, like we're going we're going like slow and long." Like that's what I always say. Like try to go slow on purpose, keep the stride long, and then I'll tell them like whatever a little bit later. I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna speed it up now. We're gonna go faster, but you have to maintain that stride." And they want to go back to the running now, like the quick feet, the one, two, three. Right, so f- frequency, the the stride frequency, maintaining that good stride length, that's another area where, as you're picking up speed, still keeping that full extension and the full knee drive coming back, um, that's important. Um, acceleration is one like the the one two threes. This is like the most common thing, eh, that people ask about. You mentioned before is like the quick start, like other uh, foot speed, these kinds of things, and a lot of that isn't actually going to come from like doing it on the ice like a lot of that can start to come from off ice stuff just getting stronger but the flip side of that is the deceleration right it's like the speeding up but then slowing down like it's the it's the it's weird that people never like they don't think about that or it's just not emphasized ever but it's the exact opposite of the acceleration it's like you want to take off quick you also want to be able to slow down quick right like you want to be able to slow down on a dime and rip back the other way so it's like that deceleration part is just as important as accelerating it's you go to stop, you decelerate first before you take off, right? So it's both yeah. both halves of that. And it's learning how to load the springs to, to take off again. And that, that's all your direction changes, right? You're trying to change direction. You have to do both. You have to be able to load and push, and that goes to your, your weight transfer thing, right? Being able to swing it onto the one leg, push off. Um, and then, obviously, you, want to, you need to practice and repeat all that kind of stuff. But the last thing is then being able to do it with the puck. That's where things can kind of get messy, too, where you get open ice you can skate beautifully and then as soon as the puck comes to you it's like you have to have your head down and now you can't you can't take the way that i always talk about with any skills like you want to be able to take the skill for granted so you want to be like so confident in your skating and so comfortable with your skating that you're not thinking about it when the puck gets on your stick or vice versa like you want to be so comfortable with the puck on your stick that it's just you're thinking about playing you're not thinking about oh i have to stick handle now and whatever it has to be just like on automatic right yeah so, like a boxer, you throw a punch at him, he's used to that. He sees it. He doesn't panic. Right. He doesn't make a six-foot move mm-hmm. to get out of the way. He just parries it or he takes one step. Yeah. No, so those I had like, like I guess, 15 things there that I kind of ran through. But anything else like about kind of just like the fundamental things for skating mechanics or like maybe um, what would be like a take-home or a couple take-home things that you would say when you're starting out, when you're younger, for parents that like they, their kids are starting to get into higher levels of hockey – like what are like the key things in terms of the skating that you think to focus on? Like I have 15 here, but maybe if you have like a couple of take homes, like what, where do they, where do they focus their attention? What, what age are you looking at? Let's say the age where it starts to matter. So let's say like if we're a puberty time where like off ice training is now an option, they're starting to go through puberty. They're starting, they're serious about the hockey, like all of those things. And not even necessarily that they have a huge deficiency. Maybe they do, but more just like, what should the focus be in terms of making sure you're a quality skater? What, what are like the few things you would make sure that they hammer on? Obviously, it could be all of these, but just like what are the couple things that you think are most important? Okay, so you're talking on the ice or yeah, skating? Kind of, yeah. yeah, with their skating. I I think like one of the biggest things is um, just having the mindset of intention, of being out there and paying attention, and knowing what it, knowing what feels right and what doesn't feel right. So I know, I know for a fact, a lot of people skate and they go, you know, like, I'll use a stupid example is turning right is like, a, you know, I've had the junior players say that, like, yeah, I have a hard time turning to the right. Well, why are you figuring this out at 17? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's not, I'm not saying that in a bad way. Just saying like, okay, so there's things like, so notice things like that and like have it in the back of your mind and say, oh, this is something I got to work on and what do I have to do? Like, what are things that I can do to fix that? Right. Um, I think, but I think intention is good. And then I also would say, um, like, take time to do things, uh, again, with intention. Like, think about what you're doing. So, like, think and feel at the same time. So, like, for me, I always like doing, like, an inside edge, staying low, whatever your posture is, but, like, really working on those mechanics. So, you're feeling an edge. You're, feel, you're, you're, you're paying attention to your posture. You, you know what I mean? You're really feeling it and what feels right and what feels wrong. 
even if as a pro, right, if you, 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 you're always honing in on, okay, this is right. The depth of your bend and all that stuff and then finishing off with the toe flick. Or am I recovering? Is, it, is my uh, recovery leg coming back in the right spot? Stuff like that. Um, I think the mind to muscle connection when you're skating makes a big difference because you have a clue. So that'd be number one. So like the hard thing to, about that is, can you tell an eight year old that? Can you tell a 10 year old that? Like it makes it a little bit tougher. So I think default for them, I think it's just, um, I think it's important that kids do a lot of things where they are doing a lot of turning and, you know, just by default getting reps in. You know, a lot of people say, well, yeah, if you're doing the reps wrong, you'll, you'll always do them wrong. It's like, oh, not, not really true. Got to do a lot of volume of reps and to make it fixable. Yeah. I, well, actually, I want to punch that real quick. It's like the, if you like practice it wrong, you're always going to do it wrong. And to me, I don't, I don't think that's really the case just because remembering in my own practice, like to a degree at a certain point, you need a teaching point. Like I get that, but you you want to get better at the thing you're practicing by default like that is the mindset and the only way you get results is in the long term is by actually doing the movements correctly so for example if i start to do a deadlift maybe just because i'm strong i can lift the weight off the ground at a certain point if i'm not doing it properly i'm going to stop being able to lift more weight or i'm going to hurt myself same thing with shooting i, I could get away with um not shooting correctly just because I'm stronger earlier or I can raise the puck first or I figured out the flick shot or whatever. But after a while, that's going to run out. So most kids, just by doing reps, will by default start to figure out a better way because they'll get just by accident the one that comes off well. Like you, you always talk about when you used to practice, like one would come off well and then you'd be like, oh, and then you can have those click moments. I don't think kids will just pr keep practicing their flick shot and think like that's fine i just don't think that's how practice works you know so i don't i don't really subscribe to that that thing if you practice it wrong it's always going to be wrong i think you will um you won't improve as quickly as maybe if you have a, a teacher and instructor at some point yeah. well but, actually we had uh actually just speaking of that this is get away from the skating but we had someone that left a comment the other day that i just read that said that my i think 12 year old son practices his shot and at some point, the, he asked a question. I don't know if he was being sarcastic or if he was asking the question. He goes, at some point, like, does the is, does does he not need a lesson? Like, need at 12 or 8 or whatever the age was? It's not need. Like, the, the kid's shooting, and it's very fixable. You know, unless you look like a complete donkey when you're shooting. I mean, that's – then you but you figure that out, right? But you can tweak things here and there. But so my answer to that question would be like, I'm going to answer that guy's question right now is like, would you do it for your son? I think the age was eight or nine or 10, whatever. Would you get him lessons? Like a couple lessons. That's what it was. I, I would say if it was my kid, no, no. So that's my answer. Yeah, I would agree. Well, because I mean, that, that goes to the, our kind of our coaching talk we had last week of just like, are they going to actually listen and absorb the information? Is it just overload? It's like, so funny because when we, we had the rapid shot in here and kids would come to do their shooting lesson and it's just it's the rapid shot is fun so they don't care about what i'm saying you know same on the treadmill it's like i, I mentioned about the treadmill last week it's like the kids are just overwhelmed about the like i had a dad last night saying oh man like this was way better than last week it was his second time this week coming it's like it was already way better than last week and i was just like yeah these he settles in man now it's not new anymore you know so they can actually f focus a little bit more on actually skating now and then maybe if i throw them a teaching point maybe they'll be more apt to listen to it whatever but um but yeah i think the the point of of doing those just doing those reps and and i mean like i said i listed 15 things here and maybe if your mom and dad you didn't know there was 15 things maybe you thought it was bend your knees and try hard maybe that's the two things you thought but there's a lot to it right and so if you're gonna get and there's it, a lot more and there's a lot more. Like these are literally just the 15 things that like just came to mind. But yeah. I'm sure like and you're talking about a straight line. Yeah. Right. So if if you go to get another skating coach to talk to you, maybe he picks seven other things that I didn't think of, just like doing the brainstorm here. But the point is not the specific 15 things. The point is that there's a lot of things, and maybe you can help if you want to address a certain thing. There's better ways to fix it than others. You know. So uh, maybe it's not best to just say well he's got to go with this figure skating coach or he needs to do more power skating or he needs to get on the skating treadmill 
or he needs to start a workout program. Maybe it's not one specific thing. So I want to talk about uh, how to fix some stuff. So I wrote down five different ways you can fix things and we can talk about them. Uh, first one would be using video. Now you briefly, you touched on video before. And actually one thing I didn't think about with the treadmill too is, is what I thought about it, but it didn't articulate it in my own brain is that live feedback thing. So that is an issue if you use videos, that's not actual live feedback. But if you were to use video like as a tool to help correct skating, like how would you, how would you do, use it? Like what would you try to do? I think for me watching video, I think like I think it's no different than watching a hockey game. You could think of yourself as one thing, or or another example is like I think the middle aged man could get this. Um, is it, you think you're feeling good? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Just the was it the middle aged yeah, man? It's like it's not a normal thing you say. <laughs> like, I do. <laughs> middle aged man. Well, no, no. The middle aged man will get this because you can walk around and you think, you know, maybe you're exercising, eating right, and all that stuff. And then uh, you go by a mirror and you go, oh, Jesus, I didn't. Is that me? Or you see a picture. And you go, is that me? I thought I was leaner or I thought, like, I didn't know it was that gray or look at the lines on my like, whatever, right? And it's like a shocker. So I think a lot of the times when a kid watches themselves play hockey, they see one thing. Because I was, so I, I did that. Like when I played junior, the first, like you, they would, we'd watch either film or I'd, we, they'd watch the. Literally film. Yeah, film. Yeah. yeah. Like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the wheel. Uh, the big wheel. Yeah. And then I would watch a, a game. It was, it'd be on TV a couple of days later because it wasn't like it is now. And I'd watch myself and I'd go, I didn't know I skated like that. I thought it was different. Like for me, I, 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 and it pissed me off because everyone said I was such a good skater that I watched myself skate and I didn't like the way I looked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought my, I thought I had longer strides and more fluid, but it was like all quick, quick, quick. So I was like, I didn't like it. So I think that's the thing about when you, when you watch video, if you look at it, you're going to be, it's, it doesn't lie. That's what you look like. Right. So, it's like if you're if you're looking at it to learn, then you can look and say, okay, I don't think I like that, or you can say, no, that's a good thing, or it can be explained to you. So like, would, would you, you would you sorry would you pick out like some of these whatever the, I had like I said I listed the fifteen things. Would you like try to pick out like a specific thing? Be like the, what like what specifically is wrong or right? Well, I, I I would look at it like if if you're not teaching, if you're looking at it yourself, because that, like. That's what the important thing is. You see it for yourself, your, your own feedback, right? When you look at it, you're going to see something that is really good or something that sticks out to you, right? So maybe the question is, is what do I like? What do I don't like, right? So you might, and, and I think, I, I, I'm only thinking, this is just me being me back when I was me. Because <laughs> when I watched myself, I thought I was a totally different skater than what I saw live, like when I saw in film. So it was like a shocker. And I want, so if I had the ability to work with someone like, you know, whatever, I would know that this could be an issue or this couldn't be an issue. So now when I look at that now, like this is hindsight now, when I look at my skating style, now I know what I could have done to fix it. Now I realize that my, you know, my hip flexors were like steel cables, right? They weren't flexible. They didn't have that drive because who knew, but that's something that I knew. Okay. That's something I could fix. And that's probably all I would fix about my skating. I was very agile, like whatever, but I would have worked on that. So that would have been good feedback for me. Yeah. So, so you, you would say that if I'm trying to use it as a tool for skating, specifically watching, then I'm trying to see if you're younger, obviously it's harder if you're old enough to know, or if your dad trying to help or mom trying to help or coach trying to help, whatever Are you, you're trying to pick out, like, is there a specific, what specific piece of feedback? could I give this kid and where can I show them that they went, they did it wrong or they did it right or whatever. Is that mm -hmm. kind of how you would yeah. use the tool yeah. in that way? Cool. Yeah. How about like, it goes to my ex example earlier, right? It's uh, talk about this all the time in, in drills, you know, I'll have a, a drill where uh, as you're coming out of turns and stuff, like my number one thing after that is like, you need to get your two, three quick steps in, whether it's a crossover or accelerating. And when we do the drills, you're always telling them, move the feet, move the feet, move the feet. And it's like, they they hear you, and they actually think that they are doing it. But then we're looking at no, you got to move your feet because they're not moving it the way they should, or they're not moving them. So that if they see it live, they go, okay, I actually have to start moving my feet. I see it now. So it's yeah, picking out little things, right? Um, 
I think my next one would be the doing like actual drills or skill specific stuff that I'm going to plug the, your video stuff that you have online. So that's another thing um, that you get members get on the website. So if you go, there's, we have like a videos tab you can click on and it's you doing all the teaching and you doing all the drills that you recorded back in the day. Yeah. It's only and, five years ago. Yeah. And uh, it's all of this stuff that we're talking about. So it's like actual like skating mechanics drills that you can do um, and that you can follow with all the teaching. Like you're actually, you're explaining it right there, showing how to do it and all that kind of stuff. So that's a great, um, that's a great tool because a lot of times you go to the, whatever skating coach or the uh, treadmill guy or whatever, and you're not actually getting as much the teaching points as you would like. Um, so not only is it save you a bunch of money doing it this way, but you're actually going to get you teaching it, which, you know, you're going to get the, the quality. Yeah, I, I would really suggest, you know, I almost forget about that sometimes. It's like there's some probably, probably an hour to two or more of just skating. And if people followed that, they'd be better skaters. And that's just, I love, I like doing it. Yeah, and you can you can focus yeah. on the specific yeah. things, whether it's the straight skating. So when it comes to skating, like I, I actually think like it's a crazy thing to say because everyone says that skating is the most important skill in hockey. If you can't skate, you can't play, which I debate. But if that's important, when <laughs> you should spend time doing your own skating, right? You really should, and that's where I learned everything. Is like on my own, like very little that I learned from someone explaining sh shit to me until I got to a point where I could ask questions and like knew what I was wrong with me. Like I was a very uh, self, I don't want to say self-taught, but that's what it was. It was, I'd go out on the outdoor rinks, which everybody doesn't have, but there's other ways you can do things and just feel what my body felt like. So I like, I use this a lot. I used to watch a game on Saturday night and on hockey night in Canada, I'd see who, whatever player, do a thing and i'd say oh i want to work on that and i'd just go over to the rink and work on that i remember doing skating and just like in my head i was just making the mind muscle connection on strides turning crossovers and everything i think people should spend more time with that so anyways go back to that if you do go to the video session on our things and just look at the skating mechanics side of it you'll have some really good stuff that is very very beneficial yeah and i think that's actually a good point too like winter's coming up you'll have outdoor rinks and stuff around and if you don't, you can still use rollerblades. You can do those things. It's not a hundred percent, but it's enough to to get the get the gist of what's going on um, for a lot of the drills, anyways. Uh, next thing you just said it too is that developing that muscle memory. So that's just like the repetition over time, like making the good habits automatic. It's like you can go like this is what I say. I remember doing shooting lessons with kids, and once they were old enough because sometimes you'd have kids that they shouldn't even be here because they're just too young but once you have kids that are old enough like the idea would be you you come for a lesson and then you go shoot a million pucks after the lesson that's why a lesson is good you know if i give you if you shoot 200 pucks when you're with me at the lesson and then you don't touch any pucks until the next lesson the improvements or not you shoot come. only another 200 yeah right it's like you need to do the repetition man like ingrain the habit ingrain the movement pattern and it takes a lot of time, man. It takes a lot of time. So you have to actually put the work into doing it on your own because you can't get enough work. Like you're not going to pay for enough time ever than what you could do if you just did, did it on your own, you know? So get your teaching points, whatever, if you want to use a lesson for skating or whatever, but then you need to do the repetition on your own to get that automatic feel, right? Um, that's the best way, at least. Then you can do your, your individual private coaching, which I mean, back to back to the video thing too. It's like, that's basically what you're going to end up getting. It's like, it's private coaching. It's, you're not going to get the real live feedback, obviously, but that's what you would hope for. Um, well, you'll know when you get it right. Yeah. Right. And then, but regardless, if you were to go pay for individual private coaching, that's a way you can do it provided that whoever you have coaching actually knows what they're talking about. And it's actually going to be worth the money. Cause obviously that can be, expensive. some guys are real good. Some, some guys, girls really good. Yeah. Some are just a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one, I want to spend a little bit of time on this one, is the off-ice stuff. So this could be the skating treadmill, yes, but uh, the gym. And maybe I'm biased because I'm, the, I'm a gym guy. But one of the things, I just did this last week. I had a team come in, and they were doing treadmill stuff. And before we went on the treadmill, I did just standing in here with all of them, trying to show them the difference between squatting and hinging and the difference between using your hips and using your knees, like hip joints, knee joints, trying to get them to f understand that there's a difference. And in the 10 minutes we spent doing it before we went on the treadmill, 
a lot of them just didn't understand how to move those joints differently, which obviously, because it's only been 10 minutes, but maybe they weren't even aware that there was a difference. And this is where, when we go, we go back to a little bit earlier, you were talking about with some of these, um, with some of these fundamental things like the coordination, the stability, all those things. Um, you need to learn your body. Like you need to learn how your body moves. I just had a guy, I think, I think he was actually from, from Sweden that just wrote me an email and he was asking about his kid and he's like, you know, I think my kid's going to be going through puberty soon. How should he be training through that time that he's growing? And to me, it's like, be in the gym, like keep doing your squats, keep doing your deadlifts, keep doing your big moves, your pushes, your pulls, like do those things in whatever capacity you have access to them. Because as you're growing and things are changing, you can change with the change if you keep continue to do those things, right? So off ice stuff is a really good place where you can start to feel like, where's my weight on my feet? You know, you can start to ask these questions in a very controlled environment. You know, what am I, am I feeling this in my glutes? Am I feeling it in my back? Am I feeling it in my quads? Am, where, where am I feeling that the, the tension? Sym like having the balance, the symmetry feel, like that's a word I use all the time uh, in the gym. It's like, are you feeling the same thing on both sides? Like even if you're doing a single leg movement, if you do it on your right leg, does it feel the same as on your left leg? Because for me, I know it doesn't. Like for me, I have imbalances all over the place and I know better, right? So you can use it as a play. That's the way I frame it for guys. It's like use it as a playground to figure out how your body works and how your body moves. And I think that is like the biggest bang for your buck thing you can do for skating in general is learn how to move your body off the ice by doing like some of these basic movement patterns. And even for what you were saying before is like, just let your kid go do things where they're being an athlete. That's always why, that's why that's the first thing when you talk about that long-term athletic development plan, right? It's like, that is number one. It's like, be able to move, right? Be able to move in all directions, be able to move on one leg, be able to do things that make you athletic. That's going to be the base of your skating posture, that athletic posture. If you don't know how to get into that and sit into it comfortably, then if we jump right onto the treadmill or you jump onto the ice and you don't know how to do that, then it's going to be harder to explain now that you have to balance on skates while you're gliding than when you're just on your feet and balanced and feeling stable, you know? So it's just a good place to work on that stuff. Yeah. My, my, my biggest thing, obviously to be a good skater, you do have to skate. So obviously, right. But if it's the only thing you do and you fix everything on the ice or you try to fix everything on the ice, or if you think doing more of something is going to be better. Um, if for some people, maybe that's true, but I would say, uh, by and large, there's many different ways that would make your skating better. Be not because you're working on skating, because you're learning about your body. You're learning about how to move properly, as you said. So I think always, not always, I think it's very, very important that kids play sports other than hockey just to, just to move differently. <laughs> just to take a break from your quads and your lower back and all that stuff. That's number one, but just to be an athlete. There's a lot for me, for me, there's a lot to be said about just being an athlete, playing different sports and beating a, beating a dead horse here. Who, that just should just make sense. But I think when we're looking at fixing solutions, it's, it's, or yeah, fixing the solution, having solutions to fix your, your skating mechanics or to make yourself, well, let's go with making yourself faster. Right. So we'll isolate it and say, let's we want to be a faster skater. Can you fix it just by skating faster? Like, what does that mean? Right. If you're a, a runner, you want to run faster. Do you push hard? No, you're pushing as hard as you can. You're going as fast as you can. So where are the deficiencies? So that's where it takes, you know, I'm not saying you have to pay someone to fix your things, but by doing other sports or being in, involved in other things, you're probably going to find an answer. So for example, if you're in yoga, that's not, I wouldn't call, consider that a sport. I would call, consider that, uh, uh, what would you call it? Oh, physical activity. Physical activity that's yeah. very beneficial in many ways. That's a longer way of saying it. But what you're gonna find is that, oh, maybe by doing yoga, you're gonna feel like you are more flexible. Well, is being more flexible good or bad? It depends. There's a point where it might be too flexible, but. You're definitely going to work your hips, your lower back, and your T-spine. That's good for skating. So is that all you do? Well, of course not. So, but maybe just being more flexible in your, 
your hip flexors and your lower back and your core, like we were talking about, maybe that's enough to have your body, you know, have that knee drive better. That might be the game changer for you, right? Or maybe you're just, when you skate now, because you've been uh, getting into the yoga and your, you know, your limbs are a little bit looser, maybe that just makes you more fluid on the ice that changes everything, right? So there's one, right? Okay, so, but yoga is not a fast movement. Well, what is? Track. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe it's because now a coach will explain to you, like, for running. So, like, because a lot of people would say, including my son, said, I don't know if it's going to translate. Okay, but then you learn all about your body, what part of your foot you should be using, the importance of your knee drive, and how that knee drive propels you forward, and having the good posture. So, it's not directly skating, but it's another thing. So, now all of a sudden, maybe by understanding how your feet, or what part of your feet is going to give you the best bang for your buck, your hips, all that stuff. Arm swings. Oh, there's another tool. So that's the point of learning from all kinds of different sports. There's a lot of different ways to become a better skater. And I just don't think it's just skating. That, that literally perfectly plays in my next my point. I was going to say is just like, obviously, the, the way you're fixing it is consistently training over time. But the pro, it's an iterative process. And it takes a combination of things. So. For example, if like when I was when I started uh, going through puberty, I started doing boxing and then I got in the gym right away and I loved the gym. I still love the gym. I love lifting weights. I th- it's just something that connected with me like right away. Uh, if I this was an, a mistake that I made, I started lifting weights. I started getting stronger. I started getting faster. And I could feel that it was working on the ice. Like I could bowl guys over. I was solid in the corners. I was solid on the wall. And I was like, wow, like lifting weights is the thing. Like that is the thing. And then I kept lifting weights. And then I kept lifting weights. And then I kept lifting weights. And then by the time I was eight, maybe 17 or 18, I'm like, wow, like I'm, I, I look like a bodybuilder. Like that's how my structure is now. So maybe somewhere along the way, I had built my base enough and I needed to graduate to another, a different thing, a different thing to work on, a different style of training, something more hockey specific, as people would say. And I didn't do that. And maybe that is a reason why when I started doing that, now I was 19, 20, 21, 22. So now I had been doing this one thing for five years and it started off great, but then I married it. And then by the time I realized, oh, maybe I should be doing something else. Well, now I'm 19, now I'm 20. Right. And in terms of the the hockey career path, that's now we're at the time where I needed to have that figured out already and I didn't have it yet. You know, so that was that was one thing, you know, whereas like I'd had I had the practice over time. I was consistent with it, but I wasn't doing that combination. I wasn't addressing or picking the specific deficiencies. And for me, it wasn't even necessarily skating. I was a good skater, but it's the same principle. It's like, what was the thing that I needed to change or to work on? And if you're looking at fixing your skating, it's like, yeah, like get in the gym. Yeah. Get on a treadmill. Maybe. Yeah. Go to the track, do track stuff and, and do a combination of things. And then over time, you'll start to be able to isolate where the specific, specific thing is, because the younger you are, the more it's just general, the more it's just like improve everything, right. Improve everything. And so, um, I think for me, like if I had to, to boil it down to just, I'm not saying this is the same three things that it would, it would have to be for everybody but when you're on the ice like just for skating specifically is you need to do the reps and you need to ask questions like those are the big two things without being like a specific thing you have to fix you have to do reps you have to ask questions to figure out what the issue is and then get in the gym like those are my two things get in the gym and it doesn't have to be anything crazy like with the young kids that i work with it's like we're we're literally working on form like they think they work out and they do deadlifts and they do all this stuff and it's like everything's super light they're just i'm teaching them how to move man like that's what it is and that's the biggest benefit that you'll get when you're young because i get people all the time the kid's six years old and wants to come on the treadmill or the and if you want to go and do it and it's fun it's like whatever but i'm saying for specifically fixing skating it's like play other sports be active, be able to crawl, be able to jump, be able to do these things that are just athletic movements. And that's going to be the best thing to translate just indirectly. Providing your skating. <laughs> Providing yeah. you also, yeah. It's going to be a benefit, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I, I, of course. no, 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 because I know there's going to be a comment like, so don't skate and yeah, just, no, right, no, no, right, no. Right, right. Like you're doing your skating, you're practicing, you're putting some intention in it, but 
doing other sports or gym work or yoga or stretching or jumping, whatever it is, yeah. running up hills that's going to cross train for hockey. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think that's all I got. Um, I know that that was an interesting episode because that I get a lot of those things we talked about are just like common, common questions. So uh, hopefully that's useful. Do you have anything else you'd like to finish? No, I don't think topic? so, dude. Think you're good? Okay, so we'll leave it there. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to send them in. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye.